Hello everyone, I'm Dave Michaels with Classical Numismatic Group, and in this inaugural edition of CNG's Classical Numismatics, we're going to be talking about the coinage of the 12 Caesars of Rome. Not just any coinage, but the gold coins struck by those mighty men. Now, all of the coins that are going to be seen in this presentation are in Triton 24, our big marquee auction on January 19th and 20th. And to view those, all you have to do is go to our website, cngcoins.com, and click on the Triton 24 link. Now, the 150 years that spanned the era BC to AD can also be called a golden age for the Roman Empire. Not only did Rome finish conquering the Mediterranean world, but they also introduced a coin that would come to symbolize the wealth of the ancient world, the gold aureus. Now, this same period also saw the reigns of the 12 Caesars. These are a dozen strong men that were written up by a biographer named Suetonius. And in this book right here, the 12 Caesars. And if you haven't read it, I urge you to go and do so, because there's a reason it hasn't been out of print in 1900 years. Now, here's a rough guide to assembling the collection of the coins of the 12 Caesars. We're going to do this in two parts uh, to keep each video short. The main source we're using for this is this book right here, The Roman Aurei by Xavier Calico. We start with Gaius Julius Caesar, this guy. He's the most famous Roman of them all, and for good reason. He was a military and a political genius, and he was also utterly unscrupulous. He was willing to lay waste to centuries worth of tradition to make himself the undisputed ruler of Rome. He also struck the first large coinage in gold ever seen by the Roman Empire. And I mean, when I say large, I mean extremely large, vast. He struck these coins in 46 BC to pay his soldiers coming back from his wars of conquest and the civil wars that he fought against all of his enemies. Now, the gold aureus had only been seldom seen up until that time. It was a coin of about eight grams weight, about the diameter of a modern dime, and it was valued at 25 silver denarii. Now, each of his soldiers in his triumph was paid 5,000 denarii. And that was paid out in 200 aurei. So do the math. There were tens of thousands of soldiers in uh, Rome for this triumph. 200 aurei per man. You're talking millions of coins. And that's the reason that they're still fairly common today. If you're not fixed on getting an actual portrait of Caesar, a gold coin of Caesar with his name on it is actually pretty easy to obtain. Uh, and you can get these in you know, VF condition to fine condition to VF, uh, maybe with a few defects for north or south of $5,000. If you want a really perfect specimen, you're going to have to go quite a bit more than that because uh, they, they have sold for north of $30,000 in mint state. If you want a Julius Caesar portrait, that's a much taller order. Uh, his portrait coins were all posthumous, struck after his death, and they're all very, very rare. Uh, the most widely available of these is going to be in Triton 24, and this was struck in 43 BC by Caesar's heir, Octavian. It's a double portrait coin, Octavian on one side, Caesar on the other. And there's only between 30 and 50 of these coins still in existence uh, in any condition. So if you, they get huge prices at auctions. We're talking anywhere from $40,000 on up to the record price which is the equivalent of about $550,000 struck it, uh, uh, which was at an auction a few years ago. The next up in this imperial parade was Octavian, later known as Augustus, this handsome young fellow right here. He was Caesar's nephew. He inherited his power and prestige, and in 27 BC, the Senate named him Augustus. So he is, today is known as Augustus Caesar. He went on to reign for 40 years as Rome's first true emperor. He also reformed Rome's coinage. Uh, he struck many, many Roman gold aurei. So as a class, as on the whole, his coins are not terribly rare today. You can probably pick up a nice portrait of Octavian Augustus for between five and $10,000. If you're looking for one of those rare and special reverse types, you're going to have to pay a lot more. They've been really big money. I think the record is something like $650,000 at auction. Now, the third Caesar is Tiberius. 
He was the stepson and successor of Augustus. He was a good soldier, a fair administrator, but he was already a tired man in his 50s by the time he became emperor, and he let an ambitious young officer named Sejanus run the government for him. Sejanus made a mess of things. There was a bloody pogrom, and uh, unfortunately, that tarnishes Tiberius's name today. Tiberius probably never knew anything about the most important event of his reign, and that was the ministry and crucifixion of Jesus in Judea. Uh, and uh, that, of course, went on to have huge repercussions in history. Uh, if you're looking for a gold aureus of Tiberius, they are fairly common. As much as you can say that about a 12 Caesars aureus, they are one of the more common ones. For 24 years he reigned, he struck only three different aureus types. The most common type can be had for three or four thousand dollars in uh, fine to VF condition. Uh, they top out at about twenty thousand in the low twenties, which is um, actually quite a bit cheaper than a trip to Capri these days. Now we come to the first really mad emperor, Gaius Germanicus Caesar, better known to history as Caligula or Little Boot, which is a nickname he got as the son of a Roman general. Germanicus. He was wildly popular when he first inherited the throne, but about six months into his reign, he had a bout of serious illness, and that seems to have completely unhinged his mind. Uh, we don't really have time to examine his reign in detail. Let's just say that if half, if, if a quarter of the things that they say about him are true, he was a truly murderous loon. And because of that, he was the first Roman emperor who was ever assassinated uh, after a reign of only three years and eight months. So Caligula's gold coins are quite a bit rarer than those of the previous Caesars. Not only did he only have three years to strike them, uh, he also, a lot of his coins were recalled and melted after his reign because he was hated so much. Most of his aureae are of the double portrait type with either his father, his mother, or the deified Augustus on the other side of the coin. Uh, a coin of Caligula is a keystone coin in any 12 Caesar set, and it will set you back quite a bit. In fine to VF conditions, there's still, we're talking $25,000. In EF or mint state, uh, surely in the mid, in the low to mid six figures, um, they are rare, they're expensive. Uh, the bad ones are always the pricey ones. Now, after Caligula's murder, the only male Julio-Claudian left of the line going back to Julius Caesar was old Claudius. He was in his 50s. He was a solitary bookworm, uh, and he had, was hauled out of the palace by the Praetorian guards as hailed as Caesar, or emperor. But uh, after that, he surprised everybody by actually ruling pretty well with competence and wisdom for the better part of 14 years. His gold aureae are fairly plentiful. Um, some of his coins are double portrait types, figuring himself and his wife, Agrippina Jr., or their son, or her son, Nero, who Claudius named later adopted as his heir. Uh, the prices of these coins are determined more by their condition by the, than by the rarity of any particular type. So you can usually find one and find a VF around four to five grand. Uh, a truly superb one is going to be in the mid five figures. The next Caesar, the sixth in the imperial line, the last Julio Claudian ruler, is this bad boy right here, Nero. He reigned from AD 54 to 68. His name has become synonymous with megalomania, with madness, with murder, with greed, with extravagance, all for good reason. But the first half of his reign was actually pretty trouble-free, remarkably so. It wasn't until the Great Fire of Rome in AD 64 that things started to go downhill, and they went downhill fast. By 68, he had lost popular support, and his regime collapsed in on him. He had to go commit suicide in a most pathetic fashion. His coins are very common today, and you can usually follow him from a chubby youth to a bloated adult as the years go by. They were struck for many years. At the low end, a Nero Aureus in fine to VF condition can usually be had for less than $2,000. Uh, a high grade example is gonna cost you uh, the low five figures or a rare type. Now that's the halfway point in our video set. We've gone through six Caesars. The next six are yet to come.